Hey guys, let's all welcome Southeast Asia to Civilization VI. The Khmer Empire is joining the Civ roster in Civ VI, and if you've watched some of my previous videos, you know me, being from Southeast Asia myself, have been wanting a Civ from this region for a while now. Also, on real Earth maps, that region has been a bit empty, really. Also, just as a small note, the animations of the new leader, King Jayavarman, look super smooth. Anyway, let's talk about some facts, have a quick overview of the Civ, then we can talk about opinions and strategies. First up, some important facts. This Civ and its accompanying DLC is included for no extra charge for owners of the Digital Deluxe Edition. If you don't remember, originally the Deluxe Edition was meant to only have the first four DLC, but after realizing it was a terrible deal, they made it the first six DLC. So important note here, this is the final DLC to be included for Digital Deluxe owners. Second, this might be a single Civ DLC with a scenario, or it might be like the Persia and Macedon pack, and have a second Civ with it. With how 2K and Firaxis announces things, we might only find out over the next week or two. Third fact, this Civ is meant to come with a fall update, which is supposed to be revamping how religion works. I'll go into that in more detail once the patch notes are released, but generally it's supposed to round out religion, improve the UI, and improve the AI further, with them being more capable with naval warfare. Fourth and final fact, fall or autumn ends either around December 21st if you're following astronomical timing or November 30th if you're following meteorological timing. That means this DLC and the fall update will release anytime between now and maybe by November, but latest by December 21st. Now let's move on to the civilization and talk about the four unique points of the Khmer Empire. First is the leader bonus called Monasteries of the King. Holy sites provide two food and one housing if by a river, and holy sites also do a culture bomb to grab more territory. The civilization bonus is Grand Berets. Bonus food from farms when next to an aqueduct, and aqueducts provide faith and an amenity. The unique unit is a Domre, a ballista mounted on an elephant. It's got 45 bombard and 33 melee strength, two range and two movement, and can move and shoot on the same turn, while also exerting zone of control. The unique unit unlocks with military engineering. And the unique infrastructure for the Khmer civilization is the Prasat building, which replaces the temple. Missionaries produced in that holy site gain the Mata promotion, and the Prasat building also provides a relic great work slot. So my impressions and guesses of strategy for the Khmer Empire is basically it's a population growth and religion focus early game. I see the Khmer Empire growing large and establishing religion early, and I'd get defensive and growth religion bonuses to keep you safe and allow you to defend your empire that might be a bit spread out or thin depending on your access to rivers, because you'll be wanting to expand along rivers, and that may make your empire shape a thin line if you're stuck with one long river. Since you're sticking to rivers, I'd say don't spread too much, and focus on growing your cities tall, rather than growing your empire wide. Especially with the incentives to build aqueducts, and the bonus to housing and amenities you'll be getting. You'll be able to support larger cities earlier on. I think the most interesting thing about the Khmer Empire is the scary elephants, and using them to conquer cities in the mid-game. After growing a tall empire, you can amass the Domries, and march on a neighboring empire. Two range, two movement, and you can move and attack on the same turn? Even a handful of these elephants could make a huge difference in a war. Overall, the Khmer Empire seems to be a solid Civ, with a few key things that sets itself apart from other civilizations, particularly Congo, the other growth-focused Civ. And I think building a strategy around these ranged elephants is gonna be the big thing here. But that's just my opinion. What do you think? How, how do you think you're gonna be playing the Khmer Civ? Or what strategies do you think is good for it? But alright, that about sums up the DLC and Fall Update situation, the Khmer Civ, and some impressions. I'll probably be jumping back into the game here on the channel once DLC and update release, and if you're interested in other strategy stuff, I'll be going back into Age of Empires 1 again since the Definitive Edition got delayed. Either way, thank you so much for watching, hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful, and I'll see you in the next video.